In this video, we're going to discuss some common EKG interpretations that are beneficial for EMT basics to understand. While performing ECG rhythm interpretation is outside of the EMT scope of practice, it's still a really good idea to have a basic understanding of what these rhythms are when you're on calls and when you hear these terms thrown out on scene. So the first thing we're going to do is look at what a normal heart rhythm looks like and then we'll look at some common morphologies that may indicate the need for treatment. This will give you a better understanding of what's going on in the patients in the field that you're running into and what your ALS partners may be or may not be ordering for intervention. The first rhythm that we're going to look at is normal sinus rhythm. Normal sinus rhythm is the natural looking electrical rhythm in a healthy heart. It's marked by three components that we'll go over now. First is the P wave, shown here in these blue circles. The P wave corresponds to the electrical activity when the atria contract or depolarize. The second component are the QRS complexes that are circled here in red. The QRS complex corresponds to the electrical activity when the ventricles contract or depolarize. And lastly, shown here in black, is the T wave. The T wave corresponds to the electrical activity when the ventricles repolarize or recover from that contraction they've just done. Next, we're going to talk about something called supraventricular tachycardia, or SVT. SVT is an extremely fast heart rhythm, usually above 150 beats per minute. When the heart beats that fast, the P waves become unreadable as they're obscured by the T wave. So as you can see here, this green P wave is not discernible anywhere inside this EKG strip. We know where it should be, but we can't see it. You'll also notice that these T waves are upside down. And that's not something we're gonna get into, but that is an important finding on the monitor. Those upside down T waves are covering up the space where the P wave should be. Patients who have SVT can complain of chest pain or a funny feeling in their chest, and they may be symptomatic. They could have cool, pale, dry skin, could be diaphoretic skin, they could have low blood pressure or altered mental status, and sometimes they require treatment, depending on a lot of things. Uh, the patient's background, the disease that they're presenting with, and any sort of medications that they're taking. The next rhythm we're going to talk about is something called atrial fibrillation or AFib. AFib is a rhythm in which the atria are not fully contracting. Instead, they're doing something like a quiver uncontrollably and with no discernible rhythm to them. As a result, there's no defined P wave anywhere on this piece of paper or this rhythm strip. We know where the P waves should live, and we're just not seeing them. This rhythm is commonly found in elderly people and can be a serious sign of a heart problem. The major concern with AFib is that blood in the atria has a tendency to clot because it's not forcefully being thrown through uh, the atria to the ventricles. Instead, it's remaining kind of stagnant due to that uncontrollable quivering. These clots that form can lead to strokes later on. A lot of times these patients are going to be on some sort of blood thinner to prevent clots from forming. Lastly, we're going to look at something called ventricular tachycardia or VTAC. In this rhythm, the ventricles are the main pumping chambers. So we know from up here, this QRS spike represents the ventricles depolarizing during the EKG rhythm. Imagine though that the atria have no control over sending an electrical signal down to the ventricles, so we're seeing only ventricular contractions with VTAC. Thus, each of these spikes that you see is wider than the rhythm you see above in the quote-unquote picture-perfect ECG beat. VTAC is a very serious heart complication and needs treatment immediately. 
The ventricles are contracting too fast for the heart to adequately pump blood to the body, and it can lead to ventricular fibrillation or a quivering of the heart that happens um, when a patient has died.